Hello everyone and welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to run LEGO Island in HD or any resolution and frame rate your monitor is capable of. I've tested this personally on Windows 7 and on Windows 10 with the help of some members of the Rock Raiders United Discord. So this exact install method works on Windows 7 and 10 and works flawlessly. So to get into it, once you put the disc in, you'll get the autoplay box come up. We're not going to go run auto exe, we're going to go open folder to view files and you're going to want to copy all of these files and paste them into a folder in your downloads called Lego Island like I have. Now this directory might not matter. I just happen to have downloads open in the background when I did this for the first time. I'd imagine it will work because what's happening here is the game is basically thinking that the folder in downloads or whatever directory you use is the disk. So it will run this and get the data from this as if it was getting the data from the disk because while there are ways to play Lego Island without the disk, usually you have to have it in to run it. So simply copy and paste all of these across. I've done this already for the sake of time and it does take a while depending on a few factors and I'm not quite sure what they are honestly. It took about 10 to 15 minutes for me, so it might vary for you. And here we have a folder I have called Lego Island Install Resources and this will be linked in the description below for download. And this contains DGVoodoo 2.53 and D3D RM DLL. Now both of these can be very easily gotten from online just by simply typing in these names into Google. I've done that for you, but if for some reason you don't trust my folder, you can do it yourself. There is a new version of DigiVoodoo, which is 2.55 I believe, but 2.53 tends to work with this game better. So to start the installation process, we're going to go to install. And this will work perfectly fine. You don't have to do any compatibility tests with this. It'll work just as it used to on an old PC. And actually, to quickly prove that, we we'll go to Install, Properties, Compatibility, look, absolutely no compatibility settings, and again, this was tested on Windows 7 and 10 and worked fine. So we'll go Next, just press Next for all of these, it will go very quick if you have an SSD as your boot, which I do, and should go pretty quick with a HDD anyway, because all it's doing is creating folders in program files, all of the data stays in the folder you created. Just press Install DirectX, I don't think it really does anything. It doesn't change your DirectX in the computer itself and it just makes the process a bit smoother. So go to Program Files, Lego Island and the folder will be 12 megabytes and that is correct because that means none of the data files are actually here, they're in the folder in Downloads or wherever you installed it. I recommend just for the sake of what I've done in tests to do exactly as I've done and make your folder in Downloads. The size is only about 500 meg I think, it's not too bad. Yeah, 554 meg, that's, that's not too bad at all. So now we're going to do some compatibility. And this had to have been done at some point, you might have thought. So we'll go compatibility mode, Windows XP Service Pack 3, run as administrator. We're going to do that for config, aisle, Lego aisle, and MS run. And all of these will be the same for me because I have had this installed before, obviously, from testing. And I didn't actually realize that the compatibility settings carried over, even if, even if you uninstalled. So we have all those. Now we go to downloads and go to our install resources. Go to DG Voodoo. We're going to copy D3D8 DLL, D3D IMM DLL, DDraw DLL, and DG Voodoo Setup. I'm going to copy and paste those into the directory of Lego Island. Continue when you get the admin message. I'm going to go back to that folder quickly. Copy D3D RM DLL. And if you forget this step, a big box will come up saying there's no there's no D3DRM so it'll it'll let you know and all you've got to do is copy and paste it and it'll fix it. So now we go to DGVDO setup run as administrator. We're going to press dot slash and this will make a path directly to this folder. Adapters, select your graphics card, scaling mode, stretched 4.3. This makes sure that it displays Lego Island in the original 4.3 aspect ratio. Go to DirectX, this should already be set on 3D Accelerator card, the second option down. We'll go to 1024 megabytes of VRAM. I personally go for no filtering because the road textures are very small and the curves of corners are literally just pixels. They're a few pixels, you can actually count them. And the filtering doesn't really help this at all. It, the game did run with filtering originally, but I'll show you later on with filtering turned on, but for now we're going to have it turned off. DJ Voodoo watermark off, Force VSync on anti-aliasing eight times and for resolution we're going to type in 1440 x 1080 
Oops, 1080. And this isn't in the drop down section, but you can type it in and it works just fine the same. So make sure all of your settings are the same as this and this. Go to apply. Okay. We'll get a dgvdo config file come up automatically. We go to Lego Island's own config file just to double check everything is correct. So model quality high, texture quality high, color palette high, music ticked, and direct 3D how, and these two will automatically be ticked as well. Now there are going to be some of you who know that direct 3D how has proven to be an issue in the past of trying to get this game running on modern machines, and using DG Voodoo completely fixes this. Direct 3D how works absolutely fine. There's no clicking issues. There's no graphical issues whatsoever. And you'll see that right now. So that's all good. So we're going to go to Isle. And we're going to get a very small hourglass. And that's good because that means that we're running at the right resolution. And here we are. We have LEGO Island running in 1440 by 1080 which is the 1080 equivalent of 4.3 and 640 by 480 is 4.3 as well so we get no odd stretching, this is the game's original aspect ratio. I'll we'll go sign in at the book. Oh, well that was interesting. You know, I don't tell everybody this. And something you may not have known but when you click on the book, you'll see that a box sort of opens up around here. And this is a video that's playing as the book opens. And they all display perfectly fine. So then we'll sign in, get Pepper, go to the pizzeria. And now, you're Pepper! Welcome to Lego Island! Oh, for goodness sakes, what in the blue bricks was I thinking? I forgot to tell you one more thing. If you want to help out in the pizzeria delivering Lego Island's tastiest comestibles, click on the pizzeria. Someone will show you what to do. On the other hand, if you don't want to do that, you should walk in and say hello. That's always uh, surprising. Alright, so here we are, and the first thing I always do when I get into a new game of LEGO Island is go O-G-E-L and then press H. And typing in Ogle will give you the debug menu, and then pressing H will give you the highest LOD setting, and that's the level of detail. And it's usually set to X, if we go to X you'll see. For Mama's Piano, for example, if I go close to it, you'll see it becomes the 1x4 brick with a round top. And if we go back, it will go back to a cube, or sorry, not cube, a rectangle. But pressing high, or pressing H, sorry, will give us the high lod, and you can see that that doesn't go into a rectangle until this far away. Oh, and <laughs> Mama and Papa are going to do their weird zombie walk out of the pizzeria that they always do. Oh, where'd your bike go? Never seen an animation before. Sometimes Mama and Papa will have this very odd crouched animation, and it literally looks like they're walking along like zombies. It's very bizarre. But as you can see, everything works fine. The, the steering is a bit of an issue still, because this game was originally meant to run around 10 or 15 FPS, and I actually used a frame limiter to test this. And turning with a frame limiter of 10, it looked absolutely perfect, and I couldn't believe it. And this is 50, I believe. Sometimes my monitor will automatically switch itself to 60 for some reason. But you can see that it's very quick still. And even if you run it at uh, even higher frame rates, it would probably turn much quicker. It's still, and here's what I mean about the road. You can see that it's the textures are such so small that you can see that the, literally count the pixels. And with this mode, we get no clicking issues. So I'll go to. Well, actually, good opportunity to see the transparency. You see, this bloke's bike has got completely transparent lights and wheels but the transparency is a bit odd in the fact that it will make transparent things that are behind it so minifigs also, uh, also often do that and we have mama walking very oddly away for some reason so we'll go down to the beach and we'll start this he's going to point to this in a second so i'll just click on it now 
I'm Bill Ding, and you're Bill Ding. <laughs> it's just, well, <clears throat> and you can see that the clicking here works just fine too. We can select the pieces, click on it, and it's not too precise. You obviously do have to click right on it, but it's not a case of that you have to click in a very certain place, like certain methods of running directly in your home. That's bogus. You can split any time by clicking on the triangle. We'll just go away now. Sup? Not finished? That's cool. Low low. Chill. Come back anytime. So you can see clicking is absolutely fine, and I'm going going crazy steering. I tend to go with the mouse because it's a lot quieter. And then, you, of course, you can still do easy to drive mode just by pressing shift. And you can turn somewhat more gracefully this way as well. Now having this texture mode is not too different from having filtered in terms of the grass and this rock texture. The only real difference, as you'll see later when I show you, is that the road is a lot different. And that's personally why I have it on no texture filtering, because you'll see that this looks fine as is. This rock texture here oh my goodness steering I mean if you go right up closer you can see it's pixels and of course the grass is like that too and all texture filtering does to these is just make make them slightly less blurry you're walking on the grass how are you doing that can I walk on the grass now? Oh, I can I didn't know that there is actually a bit you can walk on the grass interesting oh, blimey big texture stre texture stretching there Bikes, bikes. We'll go to the garage quickly. In here, there's a very good example of the texture transparency. That's weird, I didn't get a cutscene. So here we go. This is where the issue is. You'll see that he just emerges from the back of the car. And it's not anything that can be helped. It's just how the game is. It's just the way the text, the transparency is in the game, and I mean, it's better than the dots, in my opinion. It's better than the dot transparency. While that is, uh, you can actually see the minifigs behind the dot transparency. I believe, I truly think this one is better. Got a really low log car. See, it goes really bad. Nubby, honey, someone's got to get over to the track right away. There's a rush job, and you know those track people. They want everything fast. Nancy, I can't go. I've got two cars on the blocks already. I'll just quickly do would this do tow truck mission. I would really appreciate it, and like I always say, you scratch my brick. And I thought it best. Why not just show you a little if demo of the game it, as well? I may actually even do a, a so complete playthrough of this game because I only got this game for the first time a couple of years ago. I never actually played this new when I was young. The earliest LEGO game I had was LEGO Racers for PS1 and then I also had LEGO Island 2. Thanks again. You really pulled my and I love being able to do, there's actually a little cheat you can do here. It's meant to be a roadblock up here but if you can get it at the right angle you can actually drive straight through this block. And I've seen speedrunners, they're able to very precisely time exactly where that uh, the little gap is, and they could just go straight through it first time. We've been waiting for you. And you can see with the resolution and anti-aliasing, this game actually holds up very well for something released in 1997. And yeah, it has its issues. I mean, like you can see, that the vehicles don't have steering wheels, and everything's a sort of a bit low lod. I'm so glad you're all, here. all of the models are a bit low quality, but I mean, the minifig models are very good for the time that this was around. I said we'd be back. It's up on the rack. Folks at the track say you have everything under control. See you at the garage. Wow, back already? It's a good thing you can't fix them too, or I'd be looking for a new line of work. 
See now with the texture filtering off, you can see that the print on his torso is, although it's um, not filtered at all, it's actually still pretty good. I mean, the the textures on their faces and bodies aren't that bad at all. And even here, you'll see the textures are fairly decent, and they still look absolutely fine at 1080. If you go right up close to them, of course, you'll start to see that they're not too high resolution. Right, so we'll go and have a look at the other texture filtering method now. So we'll go press escape and unfortunately there is no way to avoid this sort of very broken end animation. It happens on all versions of the disc and there's only one where I've been able to actually make it mostly to the end. And usually if you if you move the mouse to where the green brick will be, the Infomaniac will finish his cutscene. Oh sorry, not his cutscene, his animation here. But then once you get past this, if you try and press escape on the credits, it will freeze there. So unfortunately there is no way to exit out of Lego Island without going to Task Manager and forcibly closing it. So we'll go to Digivoodoo setup. And I'm fairly certain this had bilinear filtering, so we'll go with that. And this is the one I found to match the game anyway. And oh yeah, while we're here, we'll make a shortcut. Make a shortcut of Isle. This is the one I use. And then of course you can just rename it to Lego Island. We don't need that anymore. So we go here. So immediately you can see that the Infomaniac's torso texture is a bit... Well, it's actually not even sort of better looking, it's just a bit fuzzy, honestly. The texture filtering is... Eh, it's a bit sort of just... Not really necessary at all, quite honestly. You'll see the pizzeria logos up there. They look a little better, but again, if you go close to them, you can still see that they're quite pixelated. Oh, I love that jukebox. Hey, Pepper, what do you think of this? That's nice, isn't this? You know what would be nicer? If you let him get to work. Papa, why are you so grouchy? I got a bad feeling. I could feel it in my knees. Papa, you are imagining those things. Imagining knees? Ah. You're probably right. Hello. Okay, we'll send it out. Bye. That was the jail. It sounded like Nick. But anyway, Papa, take this pizza to the jail. Now, something I didn't know you can do here, you can actually just simply move away from Papa offering That's you this okay. pizza and then he'll, he'll that say that I didn't like. it's quite cool oh yeah we'll do ogle h there we go it also makes their heads just look a bit a bit better as well from the distance because honestly having to get this close to them just to get the full lot of their bodies is just a bit odd and of course that's terrible and th this is just awful. Look at the road. Oh wow, that is actually caused by... I thought this was caused by my recording software. You can see the road will have this weird... You can see it like um, this weird pattern that happens when you turn very quickly on this. This doesn't happen as far as I could remember on the road when I don't have texture filtering on, so this is another weird artifact of... Oh, sorry, another weird effect of the texture filtering. I'm going to go with clicking, or mouse rather, because this is just so much easier. And I'm fairly certain... Oh, yep, there we go. I managed to get into the police station from all the way back there. Long distance clicking still works as well. And it... Although some places it doesn't work. Here we go. There's another example of the transparency. But you also see that... Oops, I went back in. You also see that um, the 
the bike is sort of partially transparent behind there as well. I love these little sort of animations they put in. Now this, you'll see that the textures of the face are a bit off from the colour of their heads and that is due to the Direct 3D. It has this sort of weird spectral effect on everything where it gives it a very glossy finish. And it, I mean, even a low lot it does it. And the other modes don't do it to that extent, but Direct 3D HAL is really the best way to get the full original experience of this game. If you're running it on it's running with the best graphics card back then. I mean, of course, that's what DG Voodoo is meant to do. It's meant to emulate the best of what you could get back when this game was new. And with the debug menu open, pressing Ogre, we can actually go up and down. And using this, if you really wanted to, you could go right up to a building and fly above it to see how it was made. And this is how I imagine the few people who have done this, who have uh, made the Lego Island buildings, they've done it this way. You can't actually move around this way, you can't, it's not a, a no clip. There is a no clip, but it's apparently very buggy. As soon as you hit a bounding wall, you will always end up uh, just going back down to the regular floor level, and I can go down as well. Go down under the map. And you see, it just goes straight back to it. So while this doesn't fix the the very fast turning, and as I said, a frame limit can fix this, it makes it so that you can play LEGO Island in a resolution you've probably never seen before. And there have been a few who have had LEGO Island run in a in a slightly higher resolution, but this is the way to have it run in. I would be fairly sure it would run in any resolution that your monitor is capable of. The members of the Rock Radius United Discord who helped me test this on Windows 10, they both had uh, 1080p monitors, so they ran it at the same settings as me. But I'm fairly sure if you had a 4K monitor, you could run it at 2160 vertically and. I quite can't, can't quite sure. Can't quite sure. Can't quite remember what the horizontal resolution of 4K 4.3 is. I think it might be uh, 2560. I always remember it as the it's the next resolution up when you're thinking about uh, 16.9. So 2560 by 1440 is the next resolution up in 16.9 from 1080, and 1440 is the vertical resolution, but when you're thinking of 4.3 in 1080, 1440 becomes the horizontal resolution. Where are Mum and Papa? They're probably wandering around the island. Oh, there we go. Hmm, that doesn't work. So now how close you have to get to the store to have it work. I've seen the speedruns that people have done and they can click on stuff from quite far away. There we go, works. But you can, as, as you can see, I can click on any part of the store and it will work just fine. Will the flags work? Will the flags even work? Is it just the bounding box? Oh, no way. <laughs> the actual flag is, it acts as a, as a part of the, the bounding box. I would just, just thought that was a big rectangle. Terribly sorry. Yeah, I've seen the way speedrunners, they let me click on something that's miles away, they'll click on the information since from over here. I don't think it works though. I don't think this is a... Uh, just because of what I've done with DG Voodoo, I think it's... I think I couldn't get anything to click that far away. It might... It, there very well might be just a mechanic in the game which makes it so you can't click on it from this distance, but... If I get closer to it, it does work. Now the only thing that I've noticed that can go wrong, there we go, I got to the information center. The only thing that I've noticed that can go wrong is that you will sometimes have the minifigs lose body parts for some really bizarre reason. For, for instance, their, their heads or arms or torsos will unload and they, they'll just become invisible. And I don't know if this is only happening at a certain place. I noticed this happening at the racetrack, and I'll, I'll go there now to see if it happens again. But this started happening after about an hour of playing this, and it didn't last long, in all fairness. It did go away pretty quickly. Oh my goodness. I'll go in here, then go back out to avoid the cutscene.
gonna listen to the nice music. Just as I'm walking along. Oh yeah, the infomaniacal shop when I come here. What's the fastest you've ever driven? Two hundred. One hundred. Fifty. No lot. No lot. Hey. Most of the models in this game are actually really detailed for their time. I mean, Lego isn't really that high memory anyway. I mean, you can see the seats have been optimized pretty well here. Lego's mostly flat areas, or uh, flat shapes, sorry. So it's not too difficult to have it not be too much memory, but it's just amazing how high lot a lot of these are. It was around here, I was, there was, for some reason, pedestrians walking around the track here. And this is where I noticed it. You know, if you're bored with what you see, you can change I don't know if I can force bored, it to happen. I, know, I think it was a case of it call. occurring Thanks after a certain amount of time playing. And it doesn't stay for long, so I, I'm not going to stick around and have it try and happen. They'll unload just for a, a short amount of time, then they'll come back. It won't be something that will affect, for instance, a a playthrough of the of the game or a speedrun. I wouldn't I wouldn't have thought. But that's about it for this, and I'll exit out, and it will crash again. And you'll get this. Oh, there we go. You'll get a beep. It's very bizarre. A beep will happen, and I'm not I'm not quite sure what causes that to <laughs> what causes that to happen. But the beep will happen, and then you'll just get. End. So that's it for this video, but in the next video we're going to be doing this very same thing with LEGO Stunt Rally, which I have also got working in a very similar fashion to how LEGO Island has just been set up, as you've seen. It does require a few extra steps, and in particular the alternate installer from one of the members on Rock Radish United forums. And surprisingly, LEGO Island didn't require an alternate installer, as we saw. But it's the same case with the 2D elements and the 3D elements. It will DG Voodoo will only improve the resolution on the 3D elements. Everything that's 2D, the textures, the background, the menus, the Sun Rally has the two settings of 640x480 or 800x600. They stay the same, but the gameplay looks so much better in HD, and I'll show you that in the next video. So that's it for now, and now you can play LEGO Island in HD in a resolution you never thought you'd be able to see it in, and it's amazing. And I will do a whole playthrough of this, because it's just so fun to finally have this working with direct 3d hal at high resolution and no clicking issues which is the best thing so thank you ever so much for watching enjoy lego island in hd and i shall see you in the next video